Hey guys, this is Red Pole Q with Asia Dating Experts. And along with me, I've got the man. McConnell. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to talk about why we love Japanese girls. But before we talk about why we love Japanese girls and how much we love Japanese girls, we first want to say that we don't only love Japanese girls, uh, but they are definitely uh, up there in, in terms of one of our, our favorites. Um, and, you know... I just want to be very clear that it doesn't mean that we can't love girls from Korea <laughs> or Russia <laughs> or or Colombia. I've heard good things about those Colombia. Polynesia. Polynesia. <laughs> okay, we're just, you know, but it just so happens that right now we're talking about why we love Japanese girls. So, um uh, yeah, McConnell, he, he he likes Japanese girls. Yeah, Red Bull Q, he likes Japanese <laughs> girls. He do. You know, I lived in Japan for, for nine years straight. So, you know, I, I have most of my dating experiences with, with Japanese girls. And uh, and that that's that, that's really great. That was really great. I, I you should try that. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I would like to try that. Dating a lot of Japanese girls over nine years. It's yeah. Highly recommend yeah. it. Uh, okay, so so why, why what is it we like about them? Well, the first thing is is uh, the, you know is the fun factor, right? I mean, are Japanese girls fun? Yes. What what do you think it is that makes Japanese girls so much fun? Uh, well, first of all, Japan is awesome. For those of you who don't know, so when you live in an awesome country, it facilitates a really fun, uh, a really fun energy among the people. And, and I, 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 I want to elaborate on on that. You know, when one of the things, and and I think that there are definitely other countries like that are like this. Like I think Thailand is also like this in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. Where you know, despite having a, you know it, it become a modern country, they've retained a lot of their cultural behaviors and attributes. So you know, they they still have their seasonal activities. In, in Japan, you know, in, in it's it's April or yeah, it's oh it's April. It's April. It's April right now. So, you know, there's the cherry blossom season and you know there's gonna be all of these people leaving work early to go at, to the park and enjoy the cherry blossoms and you know and, and, and with their friends and bring food and sort of hang out and you know that's I mean that's it's just really a lot of fun to do that and you'll go to different parts of whatever city in Japan you happen to be in and there's different places you can go and see the cherry blossoms and some of them are by the river and some of them are in the mountains and you know and it's just and it's and this is just one example but there's so many you know and there's fireworks in the summertime and you know there's these festivals and the girls dress up see this is a great example Japanese girls if you're dating a Japanese girl or even if you're just friends with one they want to show you their culture you know, they're, they're, oh, have you ever seen the cherry blossom before? And you'll say, well, you know, well, maybe I, ha you know, if you say you have, they'll, well, where? And you'll, I went here. Oh, great. Well, let me take you to this other place that's really nice. And they'll put on a yukata, which is a, uh, what's called a summer kimono. So it's a much lighter weight kimono. And you go there and, you know, maybe they'll get you to wear a jinbei, which is like a, like a male, a men's kind of uh, lightweight winter I mean, summer clothing, and you can wear the jinbei, and you'll go to the fireworks together, and there's, like, traditional foods at these stalls, and they can have, like, traditional, like, I don't know how traditional they are. They might, some of them might be new, yeah. but there's, like, different games. You know, they have, like, the same carnival games that we have in the West, yeah. but they have some other, like, really weird ones, like, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. fun. Yeah. That's the point. And also, like, uh, another another thing that, that's really common and really fun in Japan is uh, school festivals. You know, like uh, how like all the, the, I guess, like junior high and high schools, they like put on these festivals and, you know, everyone, you know, like the, in the in the community that that school is in, they can go to these festivals and they can like watch, you know, performances by the students and the students like cook uh, food. And, and, and one of the, the really neat things about this is this is all like put on by the students themselves. Like they do all this and there's a really nice sense of community there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think people really enjoy, I think Jap Japanese people really enjoy doing these things together. Mm. Um, yeah. That's and they definitely. have a lot of fun doing these things. There's, there's so many. And then in the autumn, especially there's so many different kinds of festivals. There's fertility festivals a lot and they're celebrated in different ways. There's, you know, more different Things than you can imagine. There's people carrying around humongous penises uh, on, you know, like, I mean, you'll need, you know, like 
20 people to carry one of these things. They're so big. And, you know, there's festivals where they have these carts, like these four-wheeled carts, and they run them down the street really fast, and they take them around a corner. They have festivals where they smash them together. They have festivals where people carry, you know, a, a, a shrine, a big shrine, and then people are riding on the shrine, and then they can fight each other sometimes. <laughs> like from, you know, there's just all of these different... Uh, and, and and they've retained all of these things that, you know, are from, you know, hundreds or, you know, from the feudal era of Japan and they still have these community things. And so, you know, there's a, that that they haven't, uh, you know, one of the things that people don't or worry about with industrialization and modernization is that countries lose a lot of this, a lot of their culture. Oh, hot springs in the wintertime. Yeah, yeah. And one thing that's really nice is that uh, and we will talk about how this works later is, but as I said, Japanese girls, Japanese people in general, uh, will love to take you and show you their culture and show you and introduce you to their foods and take you around their cities. They really, you know, want you to experience Japan. So that's, um, you know, in that way, Jap Japanese girls and Japanese people, uh, are a lot of fun. Uh, maybe we should talk about their, their behavior a little bit, right? Because, you know, uh, I think some people don't really... Uh, oh, yeah, that's all right. This is in the, in the next one about them being super cute. Now, there are a lot of people who we know, <laughs> they don't really like this cutesy behavior. Maybe, you know, you could give some examples. I know you're a fan. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm a, I'm a real fan of cutesy behavior. Um I don't know. Is there is there a, a term to this in, in Japanese? I know there's you know in in, in Korean you have uh, egyo. Oh yeah. To describe cutesy behavior, is there a well? But egyo is actually a particular kind of cutesy. Oh behavior. yeah, that's right. And it's... they do have this in Japanese. It's oh. called buriko. Oh okay, okay. Buriko, but okay. it's it, they don't have yeah yes yeah. so they yeah. have that for but okay. it's like specifically for right. something you do for men right. and only right, around right. men and you wouldn't be like that around girls. Oh uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So Japanese cutesy behavior is 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 really nice. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Do you want to give some examples first? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm happy to give some examples. So, uh, you know, in 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 the West, right? When you look at women, uh, especially, or, you know, look at what people aspire to, they want to be mature. For example, mm -hmm. right? They they um, Western culture really respects kind of adulthood. And even though they, 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 they really care about youth, but at the same time, <laughs> yeah, it's really... they want you to be an adult, right? Yeah. You know, so, so for Americans, usually if you ask Westerners, American women, what age they want to be, you know, and what was the best age of their life, most of them will cite like their early 20s. But in Japan, almost invariably, they will cite either high school or junior high school, or in a lot of cases, even younger than that. Mm, yeah, I was reading. I was reading some article. I can't remember where, but but they were talking about how like a lot of Japanese uh, men cite like childhood. Oh well, Japanese men probably do because right, right, that's right. when they get the most care and treat. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. a lot of girls, in my my experience, cite junior high and high school because it was like when they got to hang out with their friends. Right. A lot of times, like, they didn't really have to think about dating yet, so they could just, like, have fun with their friends and, you know, play UFO catchers and eat ice cream and, you know, and, 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 and go to stores that are covered in pink and, and buy stuffed animals. Oh, and, and Purikura. Yeah. Purikura, if you don't know what Purikura is, it's like photo booths, but they're like jumped up photo booths with all, like themes and you can draw and write on them yeah. and you can put stars and stickers and all this stuff. And girls have, you know, whole diaries just yeah. full of pictures they've taken with their friends, the same friends on, yeah, yeah, different, yeah. on they, different days. They'll trade them with their friends yeah. you know, so they can each keep, you know, the memories from the Purikura. Right. Yeah. So... You know, they, 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 because they don't have this belief that, you know, that, that being an adult and being an independent adult is like this really great thing, they indulge a lot more in like youthful, simple, fun. And that carries out in sort of the way they dress and in the way they act. And, and a lot of their hobbies and, and, and you know, and things they're interested in. Right, right. Just can, like, yeah, yeah. You know, for example, um, one of my, my Japanese friends uh, he, I, well, okay. I was with one of my Japanese friends and one of my American friends and we were, we were at dinner 
And, um, and, and there was recently a, a Doraemon movie that came out. And for those of you who don't know, Doraemon is this, it's like this character from, from Japan. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like Mickey Mouse or something. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Like that, and it's everyone... Like this really popular character that everybody knows and everybody watched it when they were a kid. Right, right. So we were, uh, we were sitting at dinner and we, we had seen this Doraemon movie poster somewhere. And my, my Japanese friend was like, oh, the new Doraemon movie, you know, this looks, looks so good. How and, old is he? He is uh, 29 or 30 or okay. something. So, you know, obviously he's well he's into adult. adulthood. Yeah. And my, my, uh, my American friend was like, oh, yeah, this, uh, uh, he's a teacher. And he said, oh, yeah, my student was like asking me if I saw the new Doraemon movie. And, and the Japanese friend looked at him and he goes, oh, d- did you? Mm-hmm. And, and my American friend said, what do you mean? I'm, I'm, I'm too old for that stuff. And my Japanese friend looked devastated. His face was just co- totally devastated. And he was like, Whoa, 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 what do you mean? And my American friend's like, yeah, I, I'm way too old for it. Aren't, aren't you too old for Doraemon? And then my Japanese friend goes, I, I, I am never too old for Doraemon. <laughs> and he was so shocked you know, right, that, right. That, that you could be too old for something that, that everyone loves. Right. And, and yeah, there's like this thing in the West about like being an adult. I remember uh, when I was growing up, I had like a, you know, on the light fixture into my room, you know, when you go into the room, you flip the light switch, there's like the cover and I remember, I don't, I, I, I don't remember how, exactly what age I was. Maybe it was like 13 or something. And I had like a Snoopy one. And one day my dad just came in and he was like, oh, you're too old for this. And he just like unscrewed the Snoopy one and just replaced it with like a plain, like, like brass colored one or something. <laughs> and so, you know, there's this, there's this real emphasis in the West on like growing up and being an adult. And whereas in, in Japan, they don't, they don't really have that. I mean, they seem to feel like you will do that when it's necessary, right? You know, that that just because you like Doraemon doesn't mean you can't be uh, a banker at a, you know, at a major investment firm. You know, that's those are two unrelated things in Japan, whereas in the West, those things are very related. It's like, well, if you like Snoopy, how could you possibly <laughs> manage somebody's funds? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so 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 they're really, you know, so they really like you know, even, you know, women who are, you know, in their 40s, they can be into cutesy things or they want to look cute or they want to dress cute. And, you know, they want to, uh, they, they don't have this attitude of, oh, well, I'm this age. I mean, I'm not saying that it doesn't exist at all, right? Of course, it exists to a certain extent, but it tends to, to be more around what's happening in your life at the moment than your age exactly, yeah. So, you know, there's when when you're when you're married, then you're supposed to act in accordance with what it is to be married. Or when you're a mother, then you're supposed to act in accordance with being a mother. Uh, but it's not because, oh, well, you know, you're 25 now, so you can't, you know, read uh, comic books or you can't, you know, uh, do purikuda anymore or whatever it is. <laughs> you know, you, you can still you can't buy stuffed animals. They don't have that. It's just like, you know, it, it's 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 totally fine. And so, you know women in their 40s can love Hello Kitty. They can think it's really awesome and, you know, they could have, like, Hello Kitty things and no one would think that it was really out there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, your story about your bank card is is really good, too. Yeah, I I remember... uh, So I I had a uh, a, a credit card with Doraemon on it, right? And, you know, this is not unusual in Japan to have, like, character things on something very adult, like a credit card. And I remember when I was in Canada and I was using this card and, you know, people invariably would look at they go, oh, my God, wow, that's so cool. But in, in, in American culture, you, they, you can't get that because they want, you know, the finance is very serious. And we, uh, we, we don't, we, we don't want getting mixed up with, uh, with any funny business like Mickey Mouse. We've got to take this very seriously. And, and it's ironic because, you know, Japanese are pretty famous for their good money management. Yeah. Americans are famous for their really poor money management. So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of ironic. Yeah. I think maybe if there was a little bit more, uh, more uh, more Mickey Mouse in in uh, in our finance probably people would pay more attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and also you know in in, in Japan uh, every prefecture has its own character mm-hmm. that's like designed by an artist, uh, and they're all very cute. 
Yeah, and and even the transit cards. Yeah, that's true. They, yeah, they, you know, yeah. they they have like uh, you know, like in New York, you have your metro card, and it's just like this metro <laughs> <Orange>. card, <laughs> and, and you know, it's just like it's it's very functional. There's there's yeah. nothing. Whereas in Japan, they you know, all of the major metropolitan areas have their own uh, public transportation system, and they even had like a competition about who came up with the best card, yeah. and each of them has their own character. And, you know, and, and it was, like, this thing to be, like, cutesy. Like, the one in Tokyo is called, like, the watermelon card, yeah. actually. And, you know, there's and, – and it's and it's actually not uh, – the way it works is that, you know, it's an IC card. And the Japanese word for watermelon is suika, which yeah. is S-U-I-C-A. So it's, like – Very cute. Right. Yeah. And, and, like, in Osaka, there's one – it's, like, it's called the Ikoka card. And the sign is a uh, – I think it's a penguin, maybe? Uh, Suica is a penguin. Suica oh, actually is a penguin. It's a penguin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. The, the mascot the is a penguin. Okay, I can't remember what the Ikoka one is. But Ikoka, it's it's spelled I C O C A, but Ikoka in Japanese means shall we go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, and there was like this competition, and I think the one from like Kyushu one, I can't remember yeah. what it was called, but you know, so they, they even when it's like something like this, they want to inject a lot of like fun into it. And so, you know, for a lot of people, Talking about this guy right here. I have two thumbs pointing at myself as we speak. Uh, I, I think that's great. I like to have more fun in my everyday life. You know, yeah. I don't like everything to be so serious. And, you know, for me, that's great. For some people, we have a friend. <laughs> he's not a fan. You know, he's really not a fan. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I, I think we were talking at some point. I'm sure we were having this discussion at some point mm. uh, about how, you know, if you're if you're dating a, a girl and you, you go and you go to work during the day and you're working really hard and sometimes it's stressful and sometimes, you know, you're doing things you don't want to do and then you come home at night and then your girlfriend is really serious. Ugh. That's that's horrible. That's just that's, that sounds like a horrible situation. I totally agree. And you know, we have friends who seem to want like really mature, <laughs> serious relationships <laughs> where serious <laughs> things are discussed at the dinner table and no smiling is allowed. <laughs> and, you know, and, and that just sounds awful to me because uh, you know, and, and and I think that being in Asia and, and dating Asian women, um, you know, and, and some of them Japanese, it's it's really great to be able to like finish work and then go to like putty <laughs> or like playing crane games <laughs> or right, right. you know crane good. games are like ufo catchers yeah so like yeah <laughs> and doing stuff like that yeah uh, i mean you know uh actually you know as a typical example there's like all these apps where like you can like make like you can make your face like a panda or something. <laughs> and and girls will like, you know, record their own face and then it makes them look like a panda and then they'll send it to you. And it's like really cutesy or, you know, I remember uh, I was dating a, a girl and, oh, oh, okay. So for Christmas, <laughs> for Christmas, you know, we like wore, she like bought Santa outfits for me and her. And we like went out to, to like, we went out to, uh, to like a bar wearing like Santa outfits or at the club at Christmas, girls who are wearing Santa outfits, they get in for free and they're wearing like little elf outfits. It's, it's like so much fun, right? Yeah. It's just like great, you know, just fun. And it's not anything serious. You just, you know, and, and yeah, I really like that. You know, you could just, you know, unplug your brain yeah. when, when you, when you want to. So, uh, that's another thing. Um, so, you know, a lot of people, even married, mar well, married guys usually complain about how this stopped happening. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, th there's a lot of people who, when they date Japanese girls, they, they think that they have a very, like, extreme caring nature. So, have you, you've experienced this, I imagine, in some ways? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think that, that there's a definite interest in, in your well-being from japanese mm -hmm. girls when you're when you're dating them mm -hmm. um they really care about they're really tuned in mm -hmm. to, to how you feel and to what uh you know what's going on um and i think that that's really important because i think that in in western countries this is kind of absent in a lot of relationships and i'm not saying that the people don't care about each other in western countries but they're not always as dialed in especially mm -hmm. when they've been dating for a long long you know a long time um there's not the same level of of uh of caring and and you know, well, there's definitely an attitude in the West that like if you need something, you're supposed to tell me, right? And right, so right. if you don't tell me, it's it's your fault that I don't know, right. right? And and so you know, it's it's everyone's responsibility to tell other people what they want and need, which is 
kind of, which okay. I mean, I, I and I and I, I would say that this is a place where you know I think there's some middle ground is yeah. is 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 better because I think both extremes aren't good. And you know, in the West, I think the extreme that's not good is that sometimes people can't articulate what they want. They don't know. And sometimes they can't articulate it, even though they know what they 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 feel that they want something, but they can't articulate exactly what it is. Or sometimes they know what they know what they want, but they are too embarrassed to be able to ask for it. And so to to date someone who is constantly trying to figure out and understand what you want and it, and wants to give that to you. It's just really, really nice. Now, on the other hand, there in the extreme of the Japanese case, it can be bad because it leads to misunderstandings. Because obviously, people aren't always right about you know. I might think you want something. I could be wrong. I mean, we have a roommate, and you know, we we are you know, you just don't know all the time what people really really want. You know, and there could be some miscommunication, and someone could think that you want something when really you don't. And you know, so that can be the extreme on the other. On the other hand, but I would say that in general, the idea that they are looking out for what it is that you want, it, it creates a much nicer uh, environment where, you know, you can kind of, you know, once again, if you ever had a stressful day, probably the last thing you want to do is explain to someone what it is that you want. <laughs> Whereas if they're like, oh, it looks like they, they mentally know it looks like you've had a stressful day and they adjust their behavior to the fact that they recognize that it's just really nice and and it's and it's not a one way thing you know so you know i know a lot of uh westerners they they think that this is something that girls have to do for guys but but it's not it goes both ways guys are supposed to do this for women too uh, but there is generally an understanding that a lot of times in the way that japanese culture is structured men have much harder lives than than women and that's and and if it's not that way, if it's the reverse, and the woman you know has a much more stressful life, then it would be reversed in terms of who's supposed to be thinking most about the other. So it isn't a one way thing. It's once again, it's about the roles that people are playing at any given time, and uh, you know, and and so most Western guys, uh, if, if they've, I remember when my first year in uh, in in Japan, uh, the, there was a. There was my uh, good friend of mine, and he had this Japanese girlfriend, and he, he was incredible. He was like, "Oh my god, my Japanese girlfriend is so amazing." She, she, we took a shower, and you know, she, she just washed my entire body. She washed between my toes, between my toes. I mean, he couldn't, you know, he couldn't believe this, right? No. And, and I think that this is a great example. Now, people, once again, they'd say, oh, well, this is just something, you know, this is like some male chauvinistic thing. But it's not. I mean, I, I if, if if it's something that I do for girls that I'm dating too, they, we, we'll take a shower together and we'll wash each other. And that's so much nicer than I wash myself, she washes herself, and it's like two separate things. Yeah. You know, there's like this sharing culture. in, And it's not only about women with men. Uh, you know, we talked about this the other day, but, you know, Japanese have a culture of going to the public baths and if you go with your with your friends with your guy friends and you are supposed to wash each other's backs like that's kind of part of what you do and i know that makes westerners uncomfortable but you know think about it from the perspective of you know you're supposed to care about others and other people around you are supposed to make their lives easier and you know they they're not supposed to go hey man could you uh hit that back for me i mean you know you're not supposed in fact it's kind of rude even to ask because you're imposing yeah. on the other person by asking them so they have kind of the idea that you don't you know if you have to ask then it probably means that the other person is you know too busy too stressed to be to have the capacity to give you that level of care and attention in that moment so you shouldn't ask because then you're just burdening them by requesting something that they don't really have the capacity to give. So what you're supposed to do is you're not supposed to bring it up. And the other person is supposed to recognize, oh, hey, maybe he might want me to wash his back. And they'll go over there and wash your back and, you you know, presumably you reciprocate. And so I think it's just a very nice culture when other people are looking out for you. And uh, and it makes Japan a really nice place to live. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else about Oh, right. So, yeah. So, some other things that you might note uh, if you date a Japanese girl. So, generally speaking, if you're a Westerner and you live in Japan, then you have an apartment there. And, you know, if you're dating a girl, she stays at your apartment. And, you know, she will feel that she's come to your apartment and she's kind of, like, 
made a mess of it or whatever, you know. There's a, there's a saying when you visit someone's house, you say, ojamashimas, which means like, I'm going to bother you now. <laughs> That's essentially the translation. Ojam, ojama means to but be bothersome. So ojamashimas, shimas is to do, so I'm going to bother you now. It's kind of a loose translation. And so they kind of feel bad about bothering you. So what that means is that they feel that they need to do something to compensate you for that. So that means that they'll maybe do your dishes without you asking, or they'll wash your clothes without you asking, or they'll clean your house without you asking, or they will fold your laundry. Did I ever say fold your laundry? No. They'll fold your laundry, right? So, you know, they'll do really nice things for you. Or maybe they'll note that there's something in your house that's missing, you know, that you don't have. And they'll go, oh, he doesn't have this. And then they'll get it for you. And there's just this conscientiousness that, you know, let me just say that if you experience this, it's very hard to go without it. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> All right. So uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, we were talking about their, their caring. Uh, oh, the fashion. Oh, yeah. Fashion, fashion. Amazing Japanese fashion. So, you know, first of all, I'm not, this isn't to say that only Japanese people and Japanese girls have great fashion. You know, as we mentioned before, Korean girls, you know, they dress well. Colombian girls, I, you know, they dress pretty well. And, you know, Russian girls. Okay, so what we're saying is it's not only Japanese girls, but Japanese yeah. girls have particular types of fashion. Yeah, very unique types of fashion. Right, and many different types. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's very, you know, I remember this, this is before I lived in Japan and I was in this program where they had like some Japanese students come to uh, America and they did like a tour and whatever, whatever. And one of the things was that I remember, and I thought this was the weirdest thing. They were like teasing one of the girls about her clothes. And I was like, you know, I mean, compared to American people, American girls, I mean, she looked super fashionable and really stylish and she was, you know. From my perspective, I was like, wow, she's really done up. And they were teasing her. And I was like, oh, what are you guys teasing her about? And it's like, oh, she's wearing last year's fashions. <laughs> and I was like, what? You know, I, you know, because in, 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 in America, it's like, you know, jeans and T-shirt like all every year, uh. all year. So, you know, maybe a sweatshirt if it's cold. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, there isn't this thing. But in Japan, fashion changes and I can, you know, like last summer, and I'm not sure if this fashion trend is over, but they, there's like, you, you, there was a fashion for girls to wear these large brimmed hats and you would see like two or three girls out all together with these large brimmed hats and it looks great. <laughs> and like there was a year when like the fashion was to wear like these uh, gray shorts and suspenders with mm -hmm. like, uh, with like a dress shirt. And, uh, and, and I made the description may not sound that hot, but believe me, it was very hot. <laughs> uh, and you know, there was like a, there was like a year or like a summer when girls would wear like a garter, they wear like a mini skirt and a garter. <sighs> <sighs> Do you remember the time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so the fashion changes uh, every every year and even there's like each season has like a color yeah and you know you know that it's that season's color because suddenly you see it appearing very frequently in girls clothing so you know they pay a lot of attention to fashion and hair and makeup yeah. and you there's know, all these subsets of fashion too like there's all these different little categories within you know there's like the major fashion trends that people are dressing to and there's a, each Girl usually has some sort of sub type of fashion that she's into, right. you know, like there's like, you know, gothic fashion, there's, you know, Lolita fashion, which is like very cutesy, you know, kind of like over the top. Um, there's gothic Lolita. Yeah, gothic Lolita combination. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's streetwear, street, street okay. So there's, yeah, streetwear. Uh, yeah, there's gyaru. Yeah, uh, there's oneke, which is like older sister style, right. and there's like, oh, and then there's matching guy styles for all of these, right? Right. So whatever girls' fashion there is, there's like a men's matching fashion, and I think one of the things that makes uh, that that makes this, um, it's kind of more, it's like a fun thing, right? So in in the West, a lot of times how you dress is kind of defines who you are as a person. So like there's a BK, which is like b-boy style or hip hop style. And in the West, if you like dress like that, then you're supposed to be a certain way. You have to like certain music. You have to 
interact with people a certain way and you know you can't just wear it just for fun sometimes right i mean i i don't know like when if you were when you were growing up there was this whole thing about being a poser mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right you know in the, in the in the west it's like oh you're a poser if you don't like live the full lifestyle right <laughs> whereas in japan you're not it's, you're, you're you're a japanese person and yeah. you're just deciding to wear some stuff <laughs> and, and it's just you just like wearing it so you wear that and then maybe another day you're not wearing that and there's nothing wrong with that and so there's a, a much more of a fun element. And I think also that that means that whereas in the West, if you maybe like were wearing like, let's say like gothic style, then people at certain, you know, at work, you, you know, they would be like, well, we can't hire this person because they, they are that kind of person. Whereas in Japan, they would know that when you show up for work, you're not going to look like that. Yeah. And you can just change. And that's just a thing that you happen to be doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I, and that, that, like I said, that just makes it a fun thing. It's not some, you know, global statement about the kind of person you are. <laughs> hmm. Any other comments uh, about fashion? Uh, not really. Yeah, fun with fashion. Oh, man. Oh. Anyway, the, Asia, it's so good. Yeah, just know. like people who look nice all the time. Yeah. It's just really nice to be... You know, it's it's kind of like if you live in a nice neighborhood and, you know, the streets are nice and there's trees and, you know, the lawns are manicured. And it, it, it feels good to be in that environment. Well, in, in Asia and in Japan specifically, it feels nice when everyone is looking good and you walk down the street and everyone is dressed and they've done their hair nicely. And, yeah, it's just a really – it just really enhances your daily – life experience uh oh let's talk about sex s-e-x so this is going to be interesting because we we have a, a friend who doesn't really like the, the the japanese way of sex or the asian way of sex yeah. but uh and and we were talking about this today um you know in terms of western porn versus like japanese porn mm -hmm. so i don't know maybe you want to start uh yeah about about the the porn differences or sure just why not? general okay so because uh, I think it gives us insight into the difference in you know sex yeah yeah so well um okay so in in Western porn uh well okay let's let's talk about our friend who who really likes Western porn okay and uh and one of our friends was telling us you know we were like oh what kind of what kind of porn are you interested in and he was he was telling us well. I really like this one, uh, this one website, uh, X art, I think. And, and, in that website, it's basically like really well shot, these like beautiful scenes with like good cinematography and, but you know, like the actual sex acts are pretty, just very, very normal and, and very, you know, quote unquote vanilla and, uh, and, and, you know, he's, he's really into this, but, but we were watching these scenes later, uh, just to see what they were like and, and, you know, it's pretty pretty average <laughs> and we're no oh, okay but whereas with with japanese porn there's all these different genres <laughs> you know crazy stuff and then they're you know even just for like normal videos there's there's like all the you know all this different stuff happens in scenes um there's like a wide range of behavior uh there's lots of different things happening um you know, there's, there's a lot of things that in the West would definitely be considered like taboo, right? But they're just normal, normal by yeah. yeah it's just stuff that you like, and it yeah. doesn't mean anything negative about you because yeah. you like that stuff. It's just yeah. something you like. And it's also, like you're, you're a quirky person, haha. -ha. Right, right. And also, there's all these uh, different like types of of girls that are portrayed in 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 different like pornography in Japan, mm -hmm. um, whereas we don't really have these these types in. Uh, in the West. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually this is kind of bad for, for dating and sex um, for Westerners because it makes it hard for them to understand what kind of girls they really like. And I don't just mean about, about I don't just mean in porn. I mean like in general, because in, in Japan, in Asia, in, in Asia as a whole, but especially in Japan, there's this whole idea of people having types. Um, and, and, one one great example of this is the girl group uh, AKB48. Oh yeah. In Woo. yeah, There's in a picture uh, of AKB48 just above this video. Yeah. So in uh, in Japan, this girl group AKB48 is this really huge collection of all these different girls. And each girl in the concept of AKB48 is that each girl is supposed to be a different type and they're all supposed to be the kind of girls that you would find in like, you know, your high school classroom. 
and they represent all these different types. So as a as a Japanese or you know foreign observer, <laughs> you can you can look at these girls and say, oh, you know, I like X girl because she's my type. And we don't really have this idea of types in the West, not the same way. Uh, and not to the same specificity as we have in, in Japan. Right, right. I like how you said we. <laughs> yeah, well. It's wishful thinking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. He's, he's not a, uh, he's not a, what is it? He's not like a, some, you know, wishes he was born as Japanese too. But maybe. But anyway, doesn't yeah. it's, it, I, I can tell you it's much better to go to Japan than it is to have been born yeah, in that's, Japan. Yeah, that's how I feel. Uh, so, you know, uh, yeah, so so our friend, he he really, one of the things that he likes about Western girls and what is he likes them to be that they're that they're very aggressive in, in the bedroom and that they really like, you know, they'll try and make out with you and they'll be like putting their tongue down your throat and they'll like push you down and they'll want to get on top and they'll fuck you. That's basically, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to use that kind of language on Asia dating experts. Anyway, we're all adults here. <laughs> all right well we're adults i don't know about you yeah. but we're adults and uh, anyway if you're not an adult and this makes you want to come to japan good on you uh, so so uh we uh so so you know in, and that's not the way you know japanese girls are now it doesn't mean they can't be like that but it means that in general uh that that you know they are I, I don't really like the word passive. I think a better would be they're very willing participants. And so in the same way that in uh, in in we were talking when we were talking about how caring they are and how it's like they're trying to understand what you want and they expect that you're doing the same. Well, I think it's the same in the bedroom where they expect – they want to do the things that you want them to do and they expect that you're going to try and do the things that you think that they like and that they think that, that, you, that you're going to try and figure out what they want and you're going to try and give it to them and vice versa. There we go. Yeah. All right. Tongue down there. <laughs> Still got it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, so, so I so, – I think that really what there what that does is it leaves room for uh, for for each of you to explore the other person and what the other person likes. So they ex- do expect you to sort of be more active in the sense of you know you're going to be the one sort of uh, show, you know trying to get them to do the things you want, but that's totally okay because. They don't need to go – You so in the West, a lot of times we read sex advice. They say, oh, you know, you have to – you have to – you know, girls have to tell guys what they want. Oh, I like it like this. Do it this way. Uh, you know, you bring out the – bring out the, the, the light – the lighted batons they use at the uh, at, at at the airport to direct the airplane, you know, a little bit to the left, a little bit. To, okay, that's how Westerners think. They say, "Oh, you know, if you want something, you need to communicate that." And you know, I I really don't personally. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, you know, and and there's and there's a very specific reason for it. If you give someone the answer, then they don't get the pleasure of discovery. You know, when you figure something out for yourself. You get a lot more enjoyment out of it. So there's this dynamic where you as the guy are sort of trying – you they you know, you know want her to feel good. So you're trying to figure out how to make her feel good and she wants you to feel good when you're with her. So she wants to do the things that you want her to do. And so Japanese girls in that way are very willing in that they – okay, well, yeah, if you want to do that, okay, I can do that. Or you want to do that, okay, I can do that. And they're willing to, to try and – you know, they're not thinking about, well, let me tell you, do you need to do this right now? Like, here, put your finger on my clit. Like, what? <laughs> Harder. <laughs> you know, they don't they don't have that, um, you know, because they have uh, an understanding that, that you are looking out for them and that you want to uh, to do you want to make sure they, they enjoy it. And, uh, you know, some people I mean, there are surprisingly for me, there are a lot of guys who go, well, just tell me what you want and I'll give it to you. I think that that's, I think that's lazy. That's what I think. I agree. I think it's lazy. And once again, I think that it takes away from the joy of, you know, discovering the other person. Yeah. Well, I, I think that people have a, have a really, you know, negative, 
well, not negative, but just just lazy outlook on um, on on sex. Like they they look at it as this special thing, and 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 you know if they're expecting people to tell them what they want to do, that's kind of like if you meet a new friend, and then you sit them down, and you say. Tell me everything about your life. What are you like? You know, what are your hobbies? What do you like doing? You know, how should I treat you? And you're just like bombarding them with all these questions. And that's not really how friendship works. I mean, friendship works by you spending time with people and then gradually discovering all these things about them slowly. And and you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Come on, keep it going, keep it going. Yeah. So you know, gradually discovering these things. Um, and, and, you know, that just makes the relationship, it's, it's sort of like this exponential growth where it's just getting better and better and better. And you're more able to, um, you know, adjust your expectations and, and, and really prepare for the things you're going to do with them and prepare better each time, you know, as you learn about the person's preferences and what they want and what they need. Right. I, I like how you slipped exponential in there. <laughs> I'm a nerd. All right. I, I don't, I think there's not... Too many, uh, too many recordings that have both fuck and exponential <laughs> in the same recording. Uh, you know, we, 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 we aim to keep things special. Yeah. You can, <laughs> you can uh, find our next book, Mathematics of Sex, uh, <laughs> Kindle edition. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. So, so I think that, uh, that, that most, you know, that if, if a lot of Western guys really find that they prefer the sort of Japanese way of sex it's like you know because it's people trying to pleasure each other instead of people trying to pleasure themselves okay let's move along uh oh yeah free time so you know uh, i've hit on this a couple of times and i've talked about how you know japanese people play certain roles at various times in their lives and for you know japanese people there's not this rush to sort of grow up and take on every role. And, you know, in the, in the West, we tend not to balance roles in the same way. So, you know, if you're the wife, then you're supposed to work, you're supposed to take care of the kids, you're supposed to be, uh, you know, you're supposed to be a great lover, you, you're supposed to be a great daughter, you know, you have all these roles and you're supposed to do all of them perfectly. <laughs> so, you know, it's no surprise that people fail. <laughs> so in 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 Japan that you know they they you have sort of a primary role and you know if you are handling your primary role well then for the most part you have a lot of free time to do whatever you want with the rest of your time. So if you're a student, you go to school and you know when you do your studies and then when you're not doing that, you are totally free. You're not supposed to get a job. You're not supposed to be um you know, you're not necessarily supposed to be studying more. Uh, you're not. Uh, you're not supposed to be doing chores around the house. You know, they don't really have that. It's not to say that you can't do those things, but you don't have to. And so that leaves you time to spend doing all these other things that we've been talking about that Japanese people get to do. And this is why Japanese people have very, very diverse and interesting hobbies in a lot of cases because they're they're free to do what they want to do and they're not really judged by what they choose to do um you know again going back to the fashion thing in in america um or you know in western countries in general um when people choose a hobby they're sort of defined by that hobby you know if, if someone if someone likes to draw in their free time they're you know supposed to be artistic or if someone you know is a skater yeah 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 <laughs> then they're supposed to like be a skater right right exactly so so whereas in Japan i think it's you have a lot of freedom to like pick and choose your hobbies and you're not really defined by those hobbies it's just stuff you do right, right. um and 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 you know i i've all often you know with the japanese girls that I, and japanese people in general that i've met they often have really interesting hobbies and they can keep themselves very amused uh, all, the, all the time. Now, I think that part of the reason for that is that in the, in the West, you know, we tend to organize our friends primarily by our interests. Whereas in, in Japan and in Asia in general, but in Japan, you, you're, you're, you're not, your friends aren't organized by interest. They're organized by, oh, these are my friends from elementary school. These are my friends from junior high school. These are my high school friends. These are my high school judo club friends. These are my university friends. These are my part-time job friends. And so it's more about shared uh, experience, I guess you could say, where, you know, you went through high school together. So that's why you're friends. And, you know, and so because of that, 
the, the, the their friend groups are going to be much more diverse in general than in, in the West where we organize by interest. So because they're more diverse, it's like, oh, here's so-and-so who they're the skater. And I'm not a skater at all, but we're still friends because we went to high school together. And, or we worked, we had a part-time job and we worked the same part-time job. And that's what it is. And that's totally fine. And there's nothing around that. It's just, you know, it's just, just fun and games. And so there's a much bigger acceptance of people's sort of quirky behavior. Uh, where if you're a bit strange, it's not like, oh, we can't be friends with that person. They're strange. It's like, oh, yeah, haha, they have this thing about them that's really cute or funny or whatever. And, uh, yeah, and I think that that free time allows people the, the, the ability to, uh, to, you know, sort of be a lot more relaxed uh, about uh, their, their – I don't want to say they want, they're more relaxed about life, but, well, yeah, they're more relaxed about life. Even though they say that, you know, Japanese people say, oh, Japan is a very stressful place. It's stressful in your role. You know, if you're working at, it doesn't even matter if you're working at McDonald's or if you're working at 7-Eleven, it's, it is, it's, it's much more stressful than it would be if you were working at a 7-Eleven or McDonald's at, and in the West. Because when you're doing that role, you are doing it perfectly. You are, you know, in, in, in at 7-Eleven, if there's, you know, if you're on break and there's a long line of people at the 7-Eleven, your break is over. They're going to call you and say, oh, you know, look, there's all these people. Can you come to the cash register? And that could be even if there's just two people waiting <laughs> and you have to run out there in the middle of your break and you're working the cash register for this, you know, so that this customer doesn't have to wait. And so in your work life or in your role life, like if you're a mother or if you're a father and you're doing most of the house stuff, then, you know, that is very stressful because there's a lot that goes into doing that. And the Japanese are very detail oriented. But when you're not doing that, you can totally relax because everybody else is doing their job. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, you know, I think that, uh, that, that, that makes for a much more enriching lifestyle uh, you know, yes, are there people who are, you know, workaholics? Sure. But it's not everybody is a workaholic. It's like there are certain people that are workaholics and then, you know, not everybody is expected to put in, you know, mass amounts of effort and to be trying to climb the corporate ladder. If you really love coffee and because you really love coffee, you want to work at some neighborhood coffee shop, that's totally cool because it's, it's often highly respected. Right. Right, exactly. No matter what performance, high performance in anything is respected uh, in Japan. Even if it's, uh, you know, if you are, what, what's some, there, I know there's some weird Japanese thing that someone is an expert in. Uh, so so actually, the, the, this is a kind of related story. So there's, there's a, I don't know if it's famous, but there's a Japanese manga. I can't, I can't remember the name, but the English translation is something like, uh, the, the Lonely Gourmet or something. Mm-hmm. And it, the whole manga series is about this guy who he just wants... For those of you who don't know, manga is uh, j- Japanese comics. Yeah. So so it's this... not, not comedians. I mean like comics, like comic comic strips, like comic books. Yeah. So so the main character is this Japanese salaryman. And in his A free salary time... A salaryman is an office worker. Yeah. And in his free time, he he goes to all these different restaurants in his city. And he always goes alone, and his goal is to, like, seek out these delicious meals by himself. (laughs) So he's just constantly searching for, like, delicious food. And then the whole manga is just about him finding amazing food and, like, just eating it and appreciating the experience of the food. And, you know, I can imagine Japanese people reading this and, and, and you know, being very, like, ah, you know, such a, res- yeah, such a respectful, you know, hobby. And- yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. 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 That, yeah, that's that's awesome. I, you know, I, I try and have as much of that in my life as possible. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but yeah, there's a definitely, definitely a lot of, uh, there's this sort of... <laughs> respect for people who are striving towards these goals in Japan. Right. And whether that's happening in your free time, you know, you have your office job and you put in your hours and then you clock out and then you go and you do your special unique hobby thing mm-hmm. that, you know, and but you're you're just really, you know, there's like a like one of the classic examples. I, I wish I could think of something more modern, but one of the classic examples is there is a sword fighting art that is about drawing your yeah. sword. That's all it is. You don't learn how to fight. You just learn how to like draw the sword. That's the yeah. whole art. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this is very typical of, of Japan. They just, you know, it's about, you know, whatever, taking some even really small thing 
and just being very, very good at that really tiny, small thing. They, they respect craftsmanship, no matter in, in, in you know, what it is. All right, and uh, the next one we have... Oh, they don't need your money. Yeah, how about that? Uh, a lot of Westerners... A lot of Western men can complain about how girls will expect them to pay for stuff. And, you know, I don't, I don't really have a position on this. I sort of think that, you know, there's a lot of factors that come into play. Like, if you're a poor student and you're dating girls who are students, you know, she should understand that you don't have a lot of money. And either that means that, you know, she's going to pitch in or maybe that means that you, you know, take her to places that are cheap. And, you know, she has to understand that, hey, you're doing your best. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, if you're if you're an, an older older and you have a more established career and you have money, then it can be cheap to take a girl out, you know, let's say she's a student and you've been working for a few years and if you take her out someplace and you expect her to pay up, I mean, it's not reasonable. But I would say that, you know, in general, you know, Japanese girls don't think that you don't, they don't look at guys and, 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 and think of them in terms of, you know, guys they can squeeze money out of. There's virtually, there's very, very few, you know, gold diggers in, in Japan. And, you know, I think also, you know, girls are very generous in terms of you know going on 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 dates, they're happy to 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 split the bill, which is uh, for those of you if you're interested, it's uh, bets bets. That means uh, yeah, that means separate. Uh, now I don't think that you should necessarily do that, but uh, you know, but if you ask a girl, hey, can you chip in you know ten bucks or something, then you know they'll they'll be happy to. It's it's not a big deal. So um, you know I and 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 you know they're they on conversely you could not do that. But then, you know, they'll, if you have, like, dinner and then you go for, like, coffee or drinks, then she'll go, oh, let me pay for this. And, uh, you know, I found that to be pretty pretty consistent. You know, they're not after you because uh, you have your, your, you know, money, because you have money or something like that. And they're not trying to, like, take advantage of you. Yeah. You have a story about this? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and it's largely because Japanese singles tend to have a lot of disposable income. Now this varies of course from person to person, but because Japanese people tend to live with their family until they get married, uh, they, you know, that, that if they, even if their salary is low, if they're making a thousand bucks or if they're making $1,500 a month, that money is almost all disposable income. Now they may sometimes, they do have to give some to their parents, you know, cause their mom cooks and cleans and you know, whatever. So sometimes maybe when they're working, they have to pay her like a couple hundred dollars a month. But for the most part, their money is theirs. So that means they can spend it on that fashion we were talking about, or these hobbies that we were talking about. They can spend it on traveling and you know going on trips with their friends, or they can you know go to different restaurants every day and <laughs> find the perfect meal, yeah. whatever it is. And so you know that's that's uh, that's something else. And conversely, you know, spending money on Japanese girls isn't going to win them over. Um, they're interested in the experience they have with you and whether they think you're a good person and what kinds of uh, value they can they, they get from spending time with you. And, you know, I think that that's just, you know, it's not, you know, a competition of, it's not a competition where, you know, you have to outspend the other dudes. Yeah. Um, Always a fan of not having to outspend people. <laughs> yeah, and, and even, you know, they'll, they'll be quite happy with the activities that don't cost any money. Yeah. You know, you, they'll, they, if you, you know, go to the park with them, then that that can be fine for them. If you go for a nice walk, they're gonna they're gonna they're not gonna think, oh, this guy's fucking cheapo. They're just you know they're just going to enjoy the experience for what it is, and uh, you double know, riding, double riding, yeah, double riding on the. Uh, it's not what you think, you pervs. <laughs> We're talking about uh, on a bicycle. In in a lot of parts of Japan, people still get around by bicycle quite a lot, and so you can you know the girls will ride on the back of the of the bike on the uh, there's like a uh, what's called a carrier but anyway they'll ride on the back of the bike and it's no big deal they don't go oh why don't I have a car why don't you have a car or something because there are definitely are countries where people feel that way but in Japan it's just like oh yeah ride the back of your bike sure so you know um, so I think that's another thing that's really nice is that there's not this this pressure to like earn a lot of money you know they want you to have a certain amount of money so that you're not you know broke no one wants to marry a broke guy but you know they're not going Oh, you you know, I'm looking for a guy who's you know going to make tons of money, or they're not going to pick another guy just because he has more money than you, right? Anything else about what you love about Japanese girls? There's so much, <laughs> but not for right now. 
okay. I will say, you know, as a, as a thing, you know, some people, I, I personally think that Japanese, and I think a lot of people actually feel this way, that as far as Asian girls go, Japanese girls have some of the better facial features. Mm, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, would you... Yeah, I, I guess I agree with that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, compared to... Uh, uh, oh, here's something I also think well, compared to, anyway, before I go on to that, compared to, you know, Koreans or, you know, or, or Thais or other, I, I really like the facial features of Japanese girls. Yeah. Um, I really, um, I, I also, th something else that's interesting about Japanese culture is, you know, so in Korea, if, I don't know if you're familiar, but if you don't know this, it's very common for people to get plastic surgery in Korea, like very, very common. And, you know, there's probably, you know, 40% of girls at least have had some work done, even if it's minor. Whereas in Japan, the amount is far lower. And the reason for that is that the, the, the Japanese consider it to be disrespectful to your parents to get plastic surgery. Because it basically means, you know, what your parents gave you wasn't good enough. Or, you know, you didn't, you don't really value what they gave you, which is why you're willing to, like, change it. And I think that there's this wholesomeness uh, around uh, Jap Japan and Japanese people, or earnestness, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, I think they're very, they're very earnest uh, in, in 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 how they look at life, and you know, you can see this in how much they're very much still connected with nature. Japanese people really love nature. One of the things about all these festivals that we talked about is it's about, you know, kind of respecting nature and enjoying nature. And I know a lot of Westerners go to Japan and go, oh, they don't respect nature. You know, look at what they, they, they've thrown all these, like they've ruined all their beaches and all these things. And okay. Yeah. That, that, that I'm not going to say that that's not true. Uh, but first of all, it's not like the beaches in, 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 in the East coast of uh, of America are really very nice either, right? I mean, it's like, so you know, it's not like we have some, uh, you know, we're so virtuous. Uh, but the the thing is, is that if Japanese people they know the names of trees, birds, insects. They know the habits of animals. They, you know, there are so many things in uh, in uh, in that I know about nature in Japan that I have no idea about. You know, they know when different trees blossom. Um, they, they, they're so much more connected to the natural world uh, than, than we are in the West. And, you know, I, I, that's, I think, fits, falls into kind of that earnestness and that sort of they feel like they're much more a part of the uh, nature. And I'm not saying this in some kind of hokey, you know, avatar, you know, Native American sort of way. <laughs> I don't mean that at all. I just mean that oh, wow, you know, it's this season, so that means we can have this thing or we can have this experience. And it's very natural. And they don't think, oh, you know, we want to change things around so that we can have things the way we want it. They go, okay, this is the way things are. How can we enjoy it? And, uh, yeah, I really, I think that that, that really makes uh, G living in Japan and Japanese people um, much more, uh, much more, yeah, I keep on saying the word relaxed, but um, relaxed. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good good word. Oh, Let's yeah, you know, there's another thing I want to bring up, which is the culture of gambaru. Can you, do you want to explain? Yeah, so in, uh, so we don't actually have an equivalent in in um, the West, but in Japan, there's this this term called, that that's gambaru, and it means, it, it's a rough translation is like, try your best. Hmm. Um and so you often, you all, if you go to Japan and, and you interact with Japanese people, you always, you'll hear this phrase a lot. And, you know, you often hear it in, in the form of gambate, which means, you know, it's like a, like a, you're telling somebody else to try their best and, you know, to keep your work hard and, 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 you know, give it, you know, give it your best shot. And, uh, and, and Jap Japanese people love to tell their friends this and, you know, at work, kambate, kambate. And, uh, and, 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 you know, if someone is like, you know, working hard and they'll say, ah, oh, kan, uh, kan, kambaru, you know, like they're, they're working their best, they're doing their best. And, 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 and I, I think this is, uh, this is really kind of, uh, constant throughout Japanese culture where everyone is trying to do their best in every sector of their life. Well, I wouldn't say in every sector. Uh, well, in, in, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. But I would say they choose specific sectors. Right, to, to, to perform at their best. Right, right exactly. Right, right, exactly. right. And, uh, yeah, and, and I think that, that 
that that sort of allude you know goes back to what we were talking about earlier about people having their hobbies that are like their unique hobbies or people having their um, uh, people you know really working hard to fulfill whatever their roles are and uh, and, and yeah and it's just really uh, it's just it's just something that makes uh, uh, Japanese it's it's just it's the same kind of like earnest you know okay let's try let's do it you know attitude. Uh, that uh, that makes uh, Japan a, a, a nice place to live, and Japanese people very pleasant. Now, don't get me wrong. I've, I mean, this isn't to say that I'm some you know. Uh, I, I don't. I don't think Japan is like you know the perfect country. Uh, I, I, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that there are nice things about Japan and nice things about Japanese girls. Yeah. All right. Um, if you have any questions or comments. Uh, you can put uh, them below. You'll see we already have a lot of comments from people who've read this article, some responding very positively, uh, some responding not nearly as positively, uh, some people accusing us of dehumanizing and objectifying Japanese women. And uh, for those of you who feel that way, I have a, a companion article to this one called The Misogynist Guide to Loving Japanese Girls. So if you are uh, an objectifying fetishist, I suggest you read that article because it will teach you the real deal about <laughs> Japanese girls. <laughs> All right. Um, see ya.